Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over some half-life practice problems. Uh, the first couple of problems are going to be kind of simple half-life problems but then the third one is going to be a more difficult one and so we'll need to use an equation for that. Okay so let's get into this. So what we said in the in the previous video was that the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of your sample to disappear. And what I mean by that is it decays into something else. So it's no longer the thing you started with. So if you start with 20 grams of carbon 14, then after the half-life of carbon 14, uh, you'd only have half of that left. So if I start with 20 grams, I would have 10 grams left after one half-life which is 5,730 years. So after 5,730 years, uh, half of my 20 grams would uh, decay into something else. So 10 grams would become something else, and I'd have 10 grams of my original carbon-14. So here, um, using that uh, understanding, we can figure out and solve some basic problems with uh, half-lives. And then uh, the last problem we'll go over more like not so straightforward or difficult problem. So when you're looking to figure out uh, or solve your half-life problem, one of the main things you need to calculate is the number of half-lives. So uh, because if you know the number of half-lives, then that number of half-lives will be the number of times that you need to divide your sample by to get the, the remaining uh, sample after the end of the particular time period that you're looking at. So let's go over number one to see what I'm talking about here. So here it says if you if you start with 30 grams of radium, right? So we're starting with 30 grams of radium and they want to know how much of this radium will be left after 33 days. So here's the amount of time that has gone by or elapsed. And here's my starting amount, 30 grams. And they want to know, well, how much is left after 33 days? Well, the first thing I need to figure out is, well, how many half-lives have I gone through? Has this sample gone through? So they give us the half-life, which is important. So the half-life is 11 days. So how many half-lives is 33 days? Well, you could probably do this in your head, but... What you want to do is take the total amount of days or time that they give you, take the total time that has elapsed, and divide that by the half-life. In this case, it's 11 days. And then that gives you 3. So 3 half-lives is what this sample has gone through. So now that I know the number of half-lives, I can now divide my sample in half that many times because every half-life that my sample goes through, that means half of it has decayed into something else. So one half-life means that half of it has decayed. Another half-life means half of that has decayed and so on. So I have three half-lives. I start with 30 grams of my radium, so I start with 30 grams, and my one half-life, I'm going to divide that by two. So I divide by, by two, so this is one half-life. I divide 30 by two, and I get 15. So another half-life goes by. So this is half-life, another half-life, so one half-life. And again, now this 15 grams gets divided in two. So I divide that by two and I get 7.5 grams left of my radium. That's two half-lives. I have three half-lives total, so I'm going to have to go through another half-life. So that's going to be a third half-life. So and again, one half-life. And then I divide 7.5 by 2, and I get 
3.75 grams are left. So, so after three half-lives, my 30 grams of my radium becomes 3.75 grams. So I have 3.75 grams of my radium that's left and radioactive. The other, the rest of the 30 grams has decayed into something else. Okay, what about number two? So here they're giving me the half-life. It says the half-life of zinc 71 is 2.4 minutes. So again, what that means is that after two, every 2.4 minutes that elapses or that goes by, my sample is cut in half. My original sample, whatever that sample is, is cut in half. So what's my sample? It says if one had 100 grams at the beginning, so my original sample is 100 grams. So if I start off with 100 grams of my zinc 71, how much would be left after 7.2 minutes? So here's the total time that has elapsed. Here's the time of my half-life. So the first thing I need to do is, well, figure out how many half-lives did my substance go through. So I'm going to take the total time that has elapsed, 7.2 minutes. I'm going to divide that by the half-life, which is 2.4 minutes. And when I do that, I get three half-lives again. So once again, my sample has gone through three half-lives. So now all I need to do is take my sample, my uh, original sample of 100, 100 grams. So I have 100 grams of my zinc 71, and I'm going to cut that in half three times because my sample gets cut in half every half-life. And since I have three half-lives, I have to cut in half three times. So I start off with 100 grams. So one half-life goes by, which is 2.4 minutes, and that gets cut in half into 50 grams. Another half-life goes by, one half-life, and that cuts, gets cut in half. So 50 gets cut in half, and I have 25 grams left. And then finally, a third half-life goes by, and that 25 grams gets cut in half again, and I get 12.5 grams. So 12.5 grams of my original substance is left. So this is the radioactive stuff that's left, my um, zinc-71. So that means the other part of it, the, the, uh, rest, the uh, rest of the 100 grams that's gone has stabilized, has decayed into something else. So if you can figure out the number of half-lives, uh, then you just need to take your sample and divide it by half each time to get the original sample. Now, what if your, your number of half-lives doesn't come out to be a nice whole number, which is often the case? So let's look at Number three. So here I'm starting with 157 grams of carbon 14. The half life is 5,730 years. And now they want they want to know well how much is left after set, after 2,000 years. Well, that 2,000 years is not even a half life. So if I take 2,000 years, right, and I divide by the half life 5,730 years. That's going to be some fraction less than one. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. So I get 2,000. So 2,000 divided by 5,730 equals, I get 0.349, right? So I get 0 0.349 half lives. Not even one half-life. 
So how do I use that to figure out the number, the, the, the amount that's remaining? I can't just simply uh, do the one half because I don't even have a full half-life to even do one half. So it, this won't work for this problem. But we have a nice equation that will apply to any problem. So, and that's this equation right over here. So the A sub E, which is the amount that I'm ending with after the time has elapsed. So this is the amount that's left after the amount of time that has gone by. And that's going to be equal to the amount I started with. So A S, A sub S is the amount of, of the sample that I'm starting with. So in this case, the amount of sample I'm starting with is 157 grams. And I want to know how much is left after 2,000 years. So that's what we're looking for here. So the time T, so T up here is the amount of time that has gone by, that's elapsed. So for this problem, the amount of time that has elapsed is 2,000 years. And then H is the half-life. So this equation is basically the amount that's ending, the amount that's left is equal to the amount I started with multiplied by one half raised to the time, the time given divided by this fraction, the time given over the half-life. So it's raised to that power of this fraction here. So all I need to do is plug in the information that they give me here. And notice here that the amount of time divided by the half-life is the number of half-lives that has gone by. Uh, this one uh, allows us to do fractional half-lives. So if you have 1.5 half-lives, 1.25 half-lives, right? So it's, if you don't have a nice whole number of a half-life, then this equation is going to be what you want to use. So let's go ahead and use that for for our purposes. So this is the fraction, the time elapsed over the half-life. We calculated that already. So that's our T over H. So the time elapsed divided by the half-life gives us this number here. So, so we plug everything here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So I have A so AE is going to be equal to what? The starting AS. What's AS? That's going to be 157 grams. That's what we're starting with. So I have 157 grams. And I'm going to multiply that by 1 half. So 0 0.5. And then raised to the fraction of T over H, so the time. So we just did that. So it's going to be the time is 2,000, 2,000 years divided by, and then the half-life, 5,730 years. So all we need to do is plug that in and calculate. So we would... Plug these in, calculate this, and what we end up with is 123. So this equals 123.6, sorry, 26 grams left. So out of the 157 grams that I started with, I still have, after 2,000 years, I should still have 123.26 grams of my carbon-14, the radioactive material. So this is the amount of radioactive material that's left. The other uh, that has gone away, um, you can calculate that by subtracting it from 157. So if I take 157, that's my original sample, and I subtract out the one. Uh, the 126, or 123, sorry, 123.26 grams, then 
that's going to be the amount that actually decay. So you figure that out, you get 33, 33.74 grams. So this is the amount that decayed. So this is the amount of carbon-14 that's gone. It's decayed, it's gone on to something else, it's become more stable. And this is the amount that I have left after 2,000 years. So this is the unstable, this is the radioactive carbon-14 that's left. Okay. So, well, what do I do if I wanted to find, say, the, the percent that's left or the fraction that's left? So here's the amount of grams that I have left. Well, what about the fraction? Well, the, I can still use this equation to find the fraction that's left. So all I have to do is take my equation. Let's rewrite it over here. So I have AE is equal to AS. The amount I'm ending with is equal to the amount I started with multiplied by 0 0.5 raised to T over H. And so for this equation, uh, if I want a fraction, remember the fraction left is the amount that I uh, ended with compared to the amount that I started with. So it's going to be the fraction left or the, the fraction left is going to be a comparison or ratio between what I ended with and what I started with. And that's what we have here. So if I divide both sides by AS, right, that cancels out. What I end up with is the amount that I'm ending with over the amount that I started with is equal to 0 0.5 raised to the T over H fraction here. So this AE over AS is the fractional amount that's left. The amount that, I'm, that I have left divided by the amount I started with. So this is your fractional amount right here. So all I need to do, if I want to find the fractional amount that's left, all I do is take one half and put in the time that elapsed divided by the uh, half-life, this power here. So all I have to do is plug this in, calculate that, and then use my calculator to find one half raised to that power. What if I want to find, say, the percent that's left, right? So in that case, here, this is the fractional amount. A percentage is the fractional amount multiplied by 100, right? So once I find the fractional amount, I take the fractional amount, A, oops, AE over AS, multiplied by 100 is going to give me the percent left. So this is going to be give me the percent left. But, you know, if I want to do this in one step, right, I know that AE over AS is equal to this. And if I take AE over S multiplied by 100, I can take this and multiply that by 100, and I'll get the percent uh, left over there. So the, the equation would be AE, oops, AE over AS. No, hold on a second. Sorry. That's going to be 0 0.5 raised to the t over h power that multiplied by 100. So this, let me uh, put boxes around this. So this here, this equation here gives me the fractional amount that's left over. So if my, my problem is asking for the fractional amount that's left over, I would use this equation. 
if the problem is asking me for the percent that's left, then I am going to use this equation. So this is for percent left. This equation here, this equation is for fraction fraction left. But, and then if I want to use the, if I want to find the number of grams left or how much of my sample is left, just like in terms of grams, then I would use this equation. So this equation here is for the amount in terms of grams or kilograms or whatever the uh, amount of substance you're given. So this is the amount of substance left. This is the fractional amount that's left and this would be the percent that's left. And so as long as you know the time elapsed and the half-life, then you can find these pretty easily. Uh, as long as, yeah, if you know the time and uh, the, the time elapsed and the half-life, that's all you need to find these. To find this, you need the time that's left, the half-life, and you also need to know the amount that you started with. So I hope that's helpful. Um, so if you enjoyed this video and if this really helped you out, please make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell up there so you can notified by other videos I put out. Put a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.